F-22 Raptor is a fifth generation advanced tactical fighter. It was designed to replace the F-15 Eagle and F-16 Fighting Falcon and takes advantage of the latest developments in technology, composite materials and alloys. The Raptor's speed, maneuverability and stealth capabilities make it a deadly strike aircraft and its reputation of first look, first shot, first kill is completely justified. Hi there and welcome to our channel. We invite you to sit back and relax as we embark on another exciting model building adventure. Off the bat, the picture in front did look a bit boring. But just as we can't judge a book by its cover, we can't judge a model by its box art. As the F-22 Raptor is my all-time favorite aircraft, I wasn't pulling any punches in this build. I ordered a really nice set of photo etch parts to add some extra details to the model. The decals look to be of a good quality and I especially like the Spirit of America decal set. By examining the sprue frames, one could already tell that this was going to be a big model. I am pleased to say that the parts were expertly molded and featured all of the intricate panel lines of the actual aircraft. The Italieri kit had many additional features, such as access panels, landing bays and weapons bays, all of which had a lot of surface details for added realism. My plan was to build a Raptor with all bays open, landing gear down and as much photo etch as I could handle without risking my sanity. The photo etch set was awesome and included engine components, cockpit details and various add-ons for the fuselage which would bring a lot of visual interest to the model. The canopy and heads up display were on a small sprue set of their own and were equally well molded and of good quality. The instructions were on a large fold-out, but there were a few printing errors as some of the parts were mislabeled. Luckily the illustrations were very good, so one could easily figure out what goes where using the diagrams alone. I started out by painting and assembling the various components of the cockpit. I used the parts provided in the photo etch kit to put together the instrument panel. Some seat belts and an ejector seat lever were also included. I used a bit of Tamiya panel wash to dirty up the cockpit elements and then I glued everything into place. The parts which make up the main body of the aircraft were cut from their sprue frames and the burrs were carefully whittled down and filed smooth. I test fitted the rear turbines and the parts which made up the afterburner chamber to get an idea of how to approach the engine assembly. This way I could clearly see which areas needed to be pre-painted before assembly. All of the engine parts were laid out and they received a coat of outclad gloss black in preparation for their metallic paints. Likewise all of the parts which were to be painted in gloss white also received a base coat of outclad. This included the weapons bays, landing gear and the landing gear bays and their doors. The photo etch parts of the engines were also given a coat of gloss black, after which they were glued into place according to instructions. After an initial coat of alclad black chrome, I masked off some areas and applied a coat of dull aluminium. Unfortunately, some of the paint lifted when the masks were removed and a few touch-ups with a brush were called for. Once the paint had dried, I applied a coat of glass varnish and used a Tamiya weathering kit to add some burnt streaks to the engine parts. All of the engine parts were glued in with special attention to the turbines as it was critical for them to be perfectly straight. The F-22 Raptor combines unbelievable engineering with deadly precision. It is the only aircraft which can outmatch late-generation Russian fighters 
such as the Su-30SM Flanker H and the Su-35S Flanker E. Its unique combination of stealth, speed, agility and situational awareness, combined with lethal long-range air-to-air and air-to-ground weaponry, makes it the best air dominance fighter currently in the world. After painting the missile bays in Tamiya gloss white, I used some Tamiya panel line accent to help emphasize the finer details and to dirty things up a little. I wiped away the excess using a cotton bud and odorless thinners. This dulled down the glossiness of the white areas, but also gave everything a more realistic used look. The nozzles of the upper and lower halves of the fuselage received a coat of dull aluminium, after which they were masked off and a coat of jet exhaust was applied. The next step was to glue in the missile bays and landing gear bays. As the landing gear bays would be load-bearing parts, I reinforced them with several layers of model cement. In order to install the hard points for the missiles, some holes needed to be opened up on the wings. Once the cockpit was installed, I assembled the forward fuselage, making sure to get some glue in all of the seams. After I'd attached the forward fuselage to the lower wing assembly, I positioned the upper wing assembly, making sure to line up all of the tabs on the inside of the model. I clamped the two halves together and used some thin cement to join the upper and lower wing assemblies. Unfortunately, there was quite a large gap where the aft fuselage joined the mid fuselage and it took quite a bit of filling and sanding to make it look a little better. To prepare for the main paint job, a lot of areas were masked off using masking tape, cardboard and poster tack. This included the weapons and landing bays, air intakes, rear nozzles, the engines and the access panels. I used some cardboard to create a rigid mask for the cockpit interior. This mask would protect the innards from both paint and physical damage during the long and arduous painting process. Once the masks were in place, I applied two layers of grey surface primer. Not only does this allow subsequent coats of paint to bind to the model, it also creates a uniform layer which makes it easier to see any surface imperfections. I used this opportunity to do some more work on that nasty joint on the upper part of the fuselage. I sanded down the imperfections as best I could being careful not to lose too much of the panel line details. The rest of the aircraft was also sanded very lightly with 800 grit sandpaper to create a smoother looking finish. The F-22 Raptor is the most maneuverable aircraft the United States has ever produced, using two-dimensional thrust vectoring to perform amazing aerial feats. It is powered by two Pratt & Whitney after-burning turbofan engines, which produce more thrust than any current jet fighter engine today. And they allow the aircraft to supercruise at Mach 1.82 without using afterburners. It has a service ceiling of 20,000 meters and a top speed of Mach 2.5 at altitude. The F-22 has a combat range of 850 kilometers and a maximum range of 3,000 kilometers or more when fitted with two external fuel tanks. For my selection of paint colors, I used those suggested in a Vallejo paint set for gray color schemes. Light ghost gray for the nose cone and wing trim, aggressor gray for the medium tones, and ocean gray for the dark tones. Before painting, I used an old toothbrush to clean out any panel lines which might be clogged up after the sanding process. Then I buffed up the surface with a microfiber cloth to remove any residual dust. I started with the light ghost grey and applied it to specific areas of the wings and forward fuselage using an airbrush. The Italieri model has a lot of wonderful, intricate surface details and I had to be very careful not to obscure these by using too much paint. After about an hour's worth of drying time, I masked off the light grey areas. 
I added some pre-shading to the upper and lower fuselage, trying to pick out as many of the finer details as possible. My go-to color for pre-shading is always German Grey, as it's very dark, yet it creates a gentler transition than pre-shading with black paint. I remembered to do the same for the vertical stabilizers and the various landing bay doors. Being mindful of the Raptor's fine panel line detail, I made sure to dilute the paint a little more than usual before I applied the aggressor grey. This way I could paint several light coats and slowly build up the colour to an acceptable level. I alternated between the upper and lower fuselage and allowed some drying time between each coat. The final result looked very good, with slight variations in tone to break up the uniform grey colour. One could still discern the pre-shading lines, but the shift in colour was very subtle. Then it was time to do the dark grey of the camo scheme. I have seen various bowls where these so-called splotch marks are free-handed with an airbrush, with varying degrees of success. However, I don't trust my finer airbrushing skills, so I decided to use masks instead. Using a scanner and Photoshop, I blew up the paint guide in the instructions to more or less match the scale of the model. I cut out sections of the diagram and pieced together a fairly decent set of masks. The edges were secured with tape, while I applied some poster tack beneath the inside edges of the masks to prevent them from lifting when I sprayed the dark grey. Eventually, after much effort, the masks for the splotch patterns were in place. Likewise, the tail fins were also masked off and everything was ready to be painted. Using an airbrush and some thinned down ocean grey, I applied several light layers to the various unmasked areas. I tried to use a random pattern to create some colour variations within the darker markings. When I peeked under one of the masks from a vertical stabiliser, I noticed that the ocean grey was far too light once it had dried. To fix this, I sprayed a single quick diluted coat of medium gunship grey to give the splotch marks a slightly darker tone. I removed the masks carefully and made sure to also remove all remnants of sticky tack in the process. Then I removed the light ghost grey masks. Luckily there was not too much paint bleed under the masks, so I would only need to do a few touch-ups here and there. After a quick and light gloss coat, I applied the various decals to the Raptor. I started off with the vertical stabilizers, in an effort to first check the quality of the decals. Luckily the decals were good and strong, and not one of them tore anywhere on the whole model. I added some softening solution and allowed the decals to settle overnight. After a second gloss coat of varnish to seal the decals in, I added a panel line wash, meticulously picking out all of the fine surface details. Once dry, I wiped away the excess with odorless mineral thinners. At this point, I added the small photo etch details to the various areas of the fuselage, using CA glue as an adhesive. The model comes with an impressive array of bombs and missiles. These were all glued into the various missile bays, which was rather tricky as there was a tight fit. In the air-to-air -air configuration, the Raptor carries six AIM-120 AMRAMs and two AIM-9 Sidewinders. In the air-to-ground configuration, the F-22 can carry two 1,000-pound GBU-32 Joint Direct Attack Munitions which give it a significant capability to attack surface targets. After the landing gear was assembled and painted, each section was glued into its corresponding landing bay. Once these had settled, the landing bay doors were added and the two GBU-32 bombs were glued to their hard points. Next up I glued in the vertical stabilizers. Thankfully, these were a tight fit which meant they were automatically positioned at the correct angles while the glue cured. The real-life aircraft has a unique appearance. 
It has what is referred to as the raptor sheen, which is a mostly metallic look when viewed from certain angles. To try and get a similar effect, I applied a coat of Alclad semi-matte varnish to the entire aircraft and then buffed it up with a microfiber cloth. Afterwards, I added the hatches to the various access panels and removed the cockpit mask. I used some white glue to secure the canopy glass in position and allowed it to dry overnight. On the real aircraft, the canopy contains the largest piece of polycarbonate in the world. I removed the engine masks carefully and applied some black suit from a Tamiya weathering kit. I used the same color to add some streaks to the wings of the aircraft too. And with that, she was done. Although it was only produced between 2005 and 2011, the F-22 Raptor made serious waves in the world of military technology. The F-22 was originally designed for a service life of 8,000 flight hours. By January of 2021, all F-22 Raptors had gone through a structural repair program to add another 8,000 flight hours to their usable lifetimes. While the high cost of the aircraft's development, production and operation have attracted a lot of negative criticism, few can dispute that the F-22 is an undeniable feat of engineering. So long and thank you for watching. Mm.